Again, welcome. Uh, my name is Ivan Heiberg, and I am the Honorary Consul General for Norway here in Minnesota. And it's my pleasure to welcome so many of you to this webinar on Norway and the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the lessons learned uh, from its national response and international uh, cooperation. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to share a couple of announcements. The Norwegian consulate is launching a webinar series and this uh, today is the first webinar in a series uh, which will be presented in the coming months. And you can expect webinars on other topics such as the coming of the electric vehicle infrastructure in Minnesota with lessons learned from the Nordics. And we're conducting this webinar in cooperation with the Minnesota Trade Office. In June, we will uh, host another webinar where we have the pleasure to welcome Norway's ambassador to the United States, Anniken Krutnes. Towards the end of the summer, we have planned a webinar on smart city solutions in Norway. And this fall, our plan is to present a webinar on Norwegian security policy with a focus on the Middle East. Also, for anyone looking to renew their Norwegian passport or need to submit paperwork for reinstatement of Norwegian citizenship, we will have a representative from the Norwegian embassy here um, May 18th through the 21st. So please contact us directly if you would like to schedule an appointment for either of these. And we're going to try and load our contact information for the consulate in the chat function below. So please check that out as well. Also, this webinar will be recorded and we're planning to make that available afterwards on the consulate uh, website. With that, let's move on to the topic you are all here for and so interested in. The COVID-19 pandemic is certainly something that has affected us all, whether personally, in our workplace or our community. This pandemic has no doubt affected us in countless ways this past year. And we have received many comments and questions in the Midwest here around Norway's relatively low number of COVID cases and really how they have handled the uh, pandemic. So we're very pleased to have um, uh, bring you this, this webinar uh, this morning. A uh, brief overview how this is going to work. We're first going to hear from both of our presenters, and then we're going to move into a Q&A session. And we certainly encourage uh, you folks um, uh, submitting questions, asking questions for the panelists, but please do so by using the Q&A uh, function. And my colleagues, uh, Vice Council Britt Arakani and uh, Councilor Officer Rangel Yelknes will curate questions, which will be asked of the presenters after both presentations are complete. With that, it's now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker. As State Secretary on the Greta Alamsen studied nursing and health administration uh, and later project management at Østfold University College in Norway. Alamsen's career include working as a nurse and teaching nursing at Østfold Nursing School. Estfold's county leader of Estfold's Norwegian Nurses Association and was also the clinic chief nurse at Sushbor Hospital, Estfold Central Hospital. In 1997, Anna became the health and social affairs manager in Trexta municipality. And in 1999, personnel and organization manager oh, in nice. and, um, uh, Sushbor municipality. In, from 2000, she was head of health and social affairs in the same municipality. In 2004, she became project manager for a collaboration between Estful Hospital and Estful Municipalities. State Secretary Allenson has been director of communication and collaboration at Estful Hospital since 2006, a position she was granted leave from where she was appointed state secretary for the Ministry of Health and Care Services in 2013. Welcome, State Secretary Allenson. It's a great pleasure to have you join us today. Welcome.
Thank you very much, Eivind. Uh, thank you for your nice introduction. And thank you for being uh, invited to speak to you today about Norway and the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm happy to be back in Minneapolis, even if it's only virtually this time. I spent some very interesting days in Minneapolis on a study trip in January 2018. Together with my colleague from uh, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, we visited the Mayo Clinic and met the representatives from your impressive health tech hub. The coronavirus came to Norway in late February 2020. The first cases were mostly Norwegian tourists returning from home from winter holidays in the Alps or the north of Italy. It spread quickly and soon the situation becomes serious and unpredictable. One day stands out in the first phase and it's the 12th of March. At the press conference that day, our Prime Minister, Anna Solberg, announced that we had pushed the big red button and imposed the most radical and comprehensive measures seen in peacetime. We closed our borders and we closed our country from within. This was totally unprecedented, but people understood. They had seen a dramatic change images from Italy a certain sense of unrest had emerged. As in all other countries, we were unsure how to respond to the virus. The government decided to follow a strike down and keep transmission low strategy. We shut down arenas where groups of people normally meet. We got a new normal with closed schools and kindergartens, social distancing, working from home, restrictions in public transports, no culture or sports events, and of course, hygiene measures. The measures worked and transmission dropped, but our economy and quality of life were hit hard. Unemployment rose to post-war levels and many were temporarily dismissed. What followed was tough debates on uh, financial relief packages to relevant part of our, our economy. Our government does not have a majority in the parliament, but fortunately, broad compromises were found. And thankfully, we politicians could argue about money and not something worse, such as chaos, high mortality, or hospitals stretched beyond their capacity. Restrictions were gradually lifted throughout the spring last year. The infection rate remained low during summer, but in August it started going up again with a quick acceleration from October on. New comprehensive restrictions were imposed in response to this second wave. This time the lockdown was somewhat softer and we kept, for instance, schools and kindergartens open. The infection rate remained relatively high until the end of the year with a peak after the holidays. Then, in the first months of this year, with the arrival of new, more contagious virus variants, we started seeing a rapid increase in transmissions. New strict measures were imposed to slow the spread of new variants, but in the UK variant eventually became dominant. This changed the dynamic of the epidemic and led to a third wave in March, with infection rates and hospital admissions, similar to what we saw during the first uh, wave one year ago. We have now been seeing a decreasing transmission levels for some weeks, hopefully, but we are not out of the woods yet, and our priority remains to get the pandemic under firm control. Fortunately, the start of the year was not only marked by another wave of the pandemic, but also by the launch of our national immunization program. We started vaccination with the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine in late December, but the first shipments of vaccine were small. Later, we also received vaccines from Moderna and AstraZeneca. At present, 1.5 million vaccine doses have been administered in Norway, 23% of the population has received their first dose, so have I, and 6% have had their second dose. Our current best estimate that is that everyone over the age of 18 shall have been offered the first vaccine by the end of summer. 
trust in the vaccine is critical if they are to become the silver lining that we all hope for. We believe transparency and effective communication are keys, keys to succeed in this regard. On March 11th, our Institute of Public Health decided to pause vaccination with AstraZeneca. This decision was made after reports of several cases of severe blood clots after vaccination. Since then, notification of similar cases and four deaths has also been received in Norway, unfortunately. Use of the Janssen vaccine in Norway has always been, also been put on hold following reports of severe clinical cases in the USA, similar to those seen after vaccination with the AstraZeneca vaccine. The government has appointed an expert committee to review the consequences of using or not using the COVID-19 vaccines from AstraZeneca or Janssen in the vaccination program. The committee will make a recommendation to the government of how these viral vector vaccines recommended should be used in Norway. Deadline, 20, the 10th of May. We can see that the vaccination of people in the risk groups has always already had an effect on mortalities. The vaccine rollout is now picking up speed and soon we will start vaccination of persons outside the risk groups, including young adults. Hopefully this will also, ha also have a clear effect on transmissions. In the beginning of April, our prime minister presented a plan for reopening of the society. Reopening will have happen gradually and in a controlled fashion. Progress will not be based on dates, uh, but data, namely the infection rates and disease burden and the capacity of the healthcare services and progress in vaccination. The plan consists of four steps and the first steps were taken 16th of April. And when one step has been completed, we will wait three weeks before moving on to the next once we see that, then, that it is safe and we have infection rates not rising again, we will move on to the next step of a plan. This way, we hope to return to normality slowly, but surely. In April last year, the government appointed an independent commission to conduct a comprehensive review of the management of the pandemic of the Norwegian authorities. It presented its first report earlier this month. The overall assessment from the commission is that the Norwegian authorities have handled the COVID-19 epidemic well. The report points to the fact that after a year with the pandemic, Norway is among the countries in Europe with the lowest mortality and the least affected economy. The reports also contain criticism on several points. It said that preparedness for a pandemic was poor and that there was a serious lack of protective equipment for healthcare workers. The Commission also criticized the lack of plan to limit and prevent imported infection. A key point in the Commission's report is that the authorities could not have, been, uh, could not have succeeded in its handling of the pandemic if not the population had not supported the infection control measures. In the view of the Commission, trust between people and trust between people and the authorities has been a key factor that has made the Norwegian society well equipped to meet the crisis. Building and retaining trust and co-responsibility has also been a key part of the government's strategy throughout the crisis. I think it's fair to say that we have a good starting point. Traditionally, there has been a high level of trust in government and public institution in Norway. Strong public services, not least in terms of healthcare, also provide to be important in this regard. We have monitored public opinion since beginning of crisis with weekly service. Trust in the authorities' handling has been high and relatively stable since the first lockdown in the mid-March 2020. But we have also monitored compliance with the various regulations and recommendations, both through self-reporting service and through mobility data from telecom companies. The data shows that the restrictions have been, that has this, had the 
desired effects, and that people in general have been complying. I think the fact that we have had this clear strategy from early on was important in terms of confidence in the government's handling of the crisis. We choose the strategy aiming suppressing transmission, and the strategy also came with a clear set of priorities, life, health, children, society, economy. This was widely understood and accepted by the public. Effective communication and transparent and knowledge-based decision-making has also an important factor. We publish all scientific advice. We have also strived to be open about what we know and as well as what we don't know. As in all countries, we have always also experienced corona fatigue in Norway. There has been a lively public debate about what type of restriction should be used and how the negative impact should be mitigated. There has not been much discussion about the need of tough measures. Public protests against COVID restrictions have also been small compared to most other countries. The pandemic has demonstrated our vulnerability as human beings, as well as our limitations as individual countries. International cooperation has been critical in the fight against COVID-19, and it will remain essential as we continue to roll out vaccines. Norway has relied on close cooperation with the European Union to ensure access to vaccines. We believe that our inclusion in the EU's agreements with the pharmaceutical companies has proven to be a good strategy. After a slow start, the vaccine deliveries and rollout in Europe is now speeding up. Norway, along with most other European countries, would not have been too would have been too small to secure equally good contracts on our own. Though it's joint procurement, Europe has uh, secured access to vaccines for its citizens, and it has always also played an important role in the development of several successful vaccine candidates. To put the pandemic behind us, we need to ensure access to vaccine, not just for our own population, but for the entire world. No one is safe before everyone is safe. Contributing to the vaccination in developing countries is not just the right thing to do, it's also in our mutual interest. Norway, together with South Africa, has taken a leading role to advocate global solutions and mobilize resources through the ACT Accelerator Initiative. This is the most important global initiative to ensure access to medicines, diagnostics, and vaccines. So far, more than $14 billion have been mobilized through ACTA, and US is the largest contributor. The vaccine pillar of the, this initiative is called COVAX, and it has now started delivering vaccine to low and middle low income countries. Norway participates fully in COVAX as part of a wider and coordinated European approach. This global health crisis has also put a spotlight to the need to strengthen our multilateral system. We have learned the hard way how difficult it can be when international corporations erodes and global markets fail. Shortage of personal protective equipment and pharmaceutical in initially caused concern in our health services, big concerns in the population and most certainly for our government. For Norway, a small country outside the EU, the pandemic has also demonstrated to us the importance of our relationship with the EU. The EU has high ambition for strength and uh, European cooperation for health preparedness and have proposed a European health union. The government supports these ambitions and will contribute in the realization. As we are slowly moving out of the crisis, Norway is seeking to enhance our cooperation with the EU on cross-border health preparedness. But we also see a clear need to strengthen preparedness and cooperation on a global scale we need to improve the WHO to strengthen its mandate and make it more financially robust. Only then will we be equipped to confront a new epidemic of global proportions. In this respect, 
we greatly value the leadership by the US. This leadership is essential and we are looking forward to continuing in our strong cooperation in the future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, State uh, Secretary Allenson, for those uh, insightful uh, remarks. Uh, really, really uh, appreciate it. Again, if anyone has any questions for the uh, State Secretary, uh, please load those via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and we will get to those after the next uh, presentation. And it's now my pleasure to welcome our next uh, presenter. Dr. Christian uh, Krogus is the Chief Physician and Public Health Officer of Most Municipality in Norway. He currently leads the municipality's COVID-19 response and coordinates the implementation of its infection uh, control measures. He holds advanced degrees in medicine, physiology, and research methodology from the University of Oslo and has studied sociomusicology and ethnomusicology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Prior to his current position, Dr. Kroghus has worked as researcher in um, epidemiology at the University of Oslo, as a medical doctor in hospital wards and emergency rooms, and as a county medical officer. Welcome, Dr. Kroghus. I'm very, very pleased to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me and uh, let me invite you now to Moss Municipality. Where these pictures are from. So Moss Municipality is situated about 60 kilometers south of Oslo and we have uh, about 50,000 inhabitants which means that uh, about 1% of the total population of Norway is uh, living in Moss municipality. Uh, we had our first case of COVID-19 in March 2020. Uh, uh, so far during this pandemic, we have had more than 1,600 cases um, and we have had 13 deaths uh, among our inhabitants. We have had outbreaks in nursing homes, uh, schools, wedding parties, workplaces, etc. And just to show you how our numbers of uh, cases uh, can go uh, high up and also go down, this is very unpredictable. These are the data from January only and until now. And here are the numbers of our cases uh, by age group uh, only from 1st of January this year and until 21st of uh, April. As you can see, we have uh, lots of, of cases in all the age groups, uh, except for the older ones. And we are very happy to see that, that we have not uh, have uh, many cases among the older age groups and we are seeing the effects of the vaccination already. So a few words about the lines of command and communication now during the pandemic. Uh, of course, it's the Ministry of Health and Care Services with the Erlandsen and, and others who are leading the uh, Norwegian response to the pandemic. And they are leading uh, through this Norwegian Directorate of Health. Uh, and there is one Norwegian Institute of Public Health, uh, which is uh, the Norwegian CDC, so to speak. Uh, which is um, an institute that is giving advice to the Norwegian Directorate of Health. Uh, the Norwegian Directorate of Health uh, is uh, in dialogue with the county governors. We have 10 county governors uh, around in Norway, and the county governors uh, are in communication with the municipalities. There are more than 300 municipalities uh, in Norway, administered by the municipal uh, council and headed by a mayor. And the Norwegian Institute of Public Health, uh, RCDC, uh, is also in communication with the public health officer. Uh, each municipality must have a public health officer who is uh, then giving advice to the municipality how to uh, handle this pandemic on a local level. So a few words about how we've been handling the pandemic so far. We've been testing, extensively testing 
people if they have symptoms or if they have been in close contact with infected persons. Uh, and of course, we have uh, put indivi infected individuals uh, in isolation. It's very important so that they cannot uh, infect others. Uh, it's very important for us also to maintain this quarantine for 10 days for close contacts or from travelers from uh, abroad, even though if they haven't been uh, uh, in close contact, if they come from abroad, they must be in, in quarantine. And we have also done a lot of contact tracing. We have a lot of people working for us uh, every day in the week to uh, ask uh, infected individuals, who have you been in contact with? Where have you been? So that we can put uh, those persons, those close contacts in quarantine and also test them. And we have had both regional and local regulations to reduce transmission. Uh, for example, closing on fitness centers where it is needed. And currently we have a ban on serving alcohol in restaurants, etc. So we both have regional regulations that the government uh, is uh, putting on um, many municipalities at one uh, time. And we also have uh, local regulations that the municipality uh, itself can decide. And it's very important for us to have a very good communication with the citizens and also with the media and with the local business owners, etc. Because there are so many people who are affected by this pandemic in so many ways. And the vaccination is our light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, in Moss municipality, we have administered uh, more than 15,000 doses so far. And we hope that all our inhabitants aged um, 18 years or more are fully vaccinated by September this year. So a few words about our challenges and our lessons learned so far. Uh, we thought we were fairly well prepared for a pandemic, but we were not. Uh, we were lacking training. We were lacking personal protective equipment and it was very difficult when we got our outbreak in our nursing homes. Uh, so that was a very uh, challenging situation, both for our person personnel and also for the patients at the nursing homes and of course their families as well. This was quite early in the pandemic when we had not received enough of personal protective equipment and we were not able to, to test all those people that we would like to test. And also the nature of this COVID-19 is that it is a moving target. The situation changes day by day and so do the rules, the advice, the knowledge, etc. that we rely on and that we communicate out to our citizens and out to our employees. The municipality of Moss has more than 4,000 uh, employees itself and we also give advice to employees in different businesses uh, situated in the Moss municipality and of course we do uh, give advice to our uh, to our inhabitants and when the situation is changing so quickly it's very difficult for people to know what rules uh, are uh, should we follow at this moment when the rules are different day by day. And we have also seen these new mutations. Nowadays we have this UK uh, variant. Uh, this UK uh, virus is about 100% um, of the new uh, cases that we have. And this virus, the UK uh, virus, spreads more easily. More people need treatment in hospitals as well. It's a more severe uh, condition or, or disease. And most people are loyal and follow the rules. That is not a challenge. The challenge, of course, is when people do not believe in COVID-19 at all, or if they are not able or willing to follow the rules. Because, uh, as the Secretary of State mentioned, uh, the Norwegian society and also the Moss uh, society is a society which is very high uh, 
of trust. We have a very high level of trust among us. And when some people are breaking the rules and not um, following them, it is very difficult for other people to, to accept that. Um, how only some people break their isolation or quarantine, but we have seen examples of that. And uh, unfortunately, that is, has been resulting in more cases. And stopping the virus has had severe costs to our citizens, uh, especially for the children and youth, but also for so many people losing their jobs and also so many people being more lonely than before and their mental health problems are getting worse. So this virus has had severe costs to our citizens we have had 1,600 people or so who have had COVID-19 and we lost 13 inhabitants to COVID, but the number of people that has been severely affected by this virus is much more than that. It's all our population in Moss and it is very hard for them. Currently, we are living under very severe uh, regulations in Moss uh, now. It's more or less like a lockdown with a ban on alcohol and, and so on. And uh, luckily now, Monday, a couple of days ago, our, our stores and shops were allowed to open again. So we are hoping that it will be less severe regulations in the days to come. So the pandemic has shown us also the need to join forces when faced with huge shared challenges, not only on a international level, uh, as the Secretary of State mentioned, but also on a local level. And I'm very grateful for the cooperation um, that we have experienced inside the municipality and also between our municipality and with with the state, represented by the state governor and the county medical officer, and also the Norwegian Institute of Public Health, which is the Norwegian uh, CDC, so to speak. Uh, they have a 24-7 service for uh, doctors uh, like me that we can always call for advice, and we are very happy to have this cooperation with them, and they give uh, advice to each and every municipality when they are asked. And we also have a very good cooperation with our municipalities in our, in our region and also with our local hospital. We had the pleasure of, of uh, having the state uh, secretary and the minister um, visiting us uh, at the hospital because uh, once a week uh, the municipalities around have this uh, meeting with the hospital and in that way we have had uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, stay uh, with a low uh, number of cases and also that our hospital has not received too many patients. We have been able to treat them uh, in our municipalities due to this good cooperation with the hospital. The hospital is uh, testing our, um, our inhabitants, uh, or at least analyzing the tests, and we are very grateful for the cooperation. So it is a hard time, and it has been a hard time for more than a year now, but I would like to us all to remember there are better times ahead. And this uh, picture is taken from Yelö and in Moss municipality. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kroghus. That was very, very informative and interesting. And I love that picture of, of Yele. I um, have some great memories from, um, from being at Yele on a number of occasions um, uh, during my youth. So thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, now it's time to get into the Q&A segment. So with that, I will turn it over to my colleagues, uh, Vice Council Artakami and Councillor Officer Yeltnes, who will facilitate questions for the presenters. So Britt and Ragnil, feel free to move forward with the first question. Yes, uh, 
uh, questions I've been ticking in and as I, I suspected, there's a lot of questions about traveling. Uh, so EU has announced, and, and this is probably uh, for Annegrethe Allens, state secretary. EU has announced that they will open for, up for tourists as long as they can pro provide that they're fully vaccinated. What is Norway's views on this? And will Norway consider opening the borders for fully vaccinated tourists? That is a very good question. <laughs> and I wish I could say only yes. Um, but uh, travel restrictions has been necessary for us to reduce the risk of transmission. So especially when it's um, the transmission in, uh, in each country vary a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, as we have uh, been uh, speaking of the, in January, we have more contagious virus. So we have now introduced a travel ban for foreign travelers with some minor exceptions. But um, we uh, have not taken the decision yet on how and uh, when we have to, we're going to ease our uh, entry restrictions, but uh, hopefully in a combination with the progress of vaccination and the decreasing infection rates and uh, the introduction of a very fickable uh, Corona such certificates, it will make it possible to gradually ease travel restrictions. Um, so um, we will get back to normal, but I can't tell when. What are some of the exceptions? I mean, for example, uh, citizens of Norway that live in the United States, do they still have to stay in, in Corona hotels when they arrive in Norway? And like one family was asking, um, was asking, they are planning a trip this June. Uh, the husband is uh, Norwegian. The kids have Norwegian passports. The wife is American. Um, will she be allowed in? Um, do they all have to do a quarantine hotel the way the rules are now? And when do you anticipate that looking into changing or easing restrictions? Uh, this is very concrete about uh, the, the month of June, but uh, as well, uh, the reg regulations are now, yeah. uh, they will have to go into quarantine if they are allowed in. Just yeah. now, nobody is allowed in if they are not uh, have if they don't have any uh, specific uh, work to do, for instance. So now we are very strict, uh, almost blocked. Yeah, so right now, the only reason, the only way you can get in is if you have a specific work travel. Uh, so uh, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, the tourists are not welcome today, yeah. but uh, we will hope, uh, and as I told you about the plan for, for yeah. uh, lifting re the regulations, we have four steps. We are now taking the first one. We are going to have at least three weeks between the steps. So we will see, we will yeah. see. Um, Korghus, what has been the most challenging aspect of the pandemic in your eyes? I would say that the, the lack of uh, knowledge, uh, this was a new virus, a new disease, and the ever-changing circumstances, um, and also the dilemma, the dilemma of should we go for two strong regulations, more or less a lockdown with all the costs and the, all the human costs? Or should we go for too high a rise in number of COVID cases? And of course, we shouldn't opt for any of them. But that is the very hard dilemma also on a local level, because we also have to have our local regulations uh, in addition to the national regulations. So, I think that's been very, very hard to see how many people have been suffering from the strong regulations as well. Yeah, yeah, and I can only imagine how tough this has been for the uh, for the doctors and the nurses. How is the medical community holding up? Uh, well, the there has been um, we have established a COVID emergency room, which we ordinarily did not uh, have, of course. Uh, but it has been easy to staff it with doctors. Uh, nurses have been a more scarce resource, actually. 
but at the moment we are managing just fine. Has there been a lot of uh, uh, cases among the nurses and the doctors causing them to have to step back from their work? No, um, it has not. We have had some nurses and doctors uh, in quarantine, but uh, ha luckily not too many uh, have been in quarantine at the same time. We have had only some uh, very few cases of COVID among the, the nurses and the doctors. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, and how are the different uh, municipalities working together with regards to the COVID response? Well, we have meetings um, on different levels. Uh, the chief physicians or the public health officers, we work um, and meet as different teams uh, weekly based on the geography. Uh, so that different municipalities that are neighbor municipalities can uh, check in with each other and um, keep each other updated on the situation in each, uh, in each uh, municipality. And also the county governor arranges meetings for us. Uh, just before I arrived at this meeting, I had a meeting with the county governor and also with uh, more than 100 other municipalities uh, because uh, we had um, uh, the need to, to check in with the situation. And also we, we had the, the Norwegian Directorate of Health and the public uh, Health Institute uh, in, in those meetings. So those meetings are to uh, give each other information and, and discuss uh, so that um, the government can make the best uh, choices on how to proceed. And it's both administrations and, and doctors in those meetings. Very good. State Secretary, here's a question regarding uh, Sweden's response to the COVID pandemic very, has been very sharply different from how Norway has responded. How has this affected Norwegians' relationship to our closest neighbor, Sweden? That's also a good question. Um, this is uh, probably the longest uh, border between two countries in the Europe, between Norway and Sweden. And uh, we are, uh, both Kroxus and me, we are living in Östfold, which is uh, almost uh, more borders to, to Sweden than borders to the rest of Norway. And we, have, we are very often uh, going to Sweden to shop and going to Sweden for, uh, for using our cabins. Uh, this has been, no, we haven't been able to, to cross the border at all. And there has been some um, not nice uh, always uh, situations where people have been very angry. Um, the most angry people I have met is the people in Norway who is not going to their own cabins in Sweden for more than a year. They are almost furious. I can understand them, but uh, it's a very important place for them. But uh, as countries, Norway and Sweden, we have uh, good relationships to Sweden. Uh, and uh, of course, it has been a challenge for us because, uh, for instance, our healthcare, uh, both in the municipalities and the hospitals, has very many uh, uh, healthcare workers from Sweden. So there has been a challenge with, uh, with um, transmission uh, according to the... the the uh, very often use of Norwegian, uh, Swedish uh, nurses and, and doctors. So it has been uh, difficult. So in parts of Norway, uh, we are, um, uh, we, we do have to have uh, people in from abroad and now they have been, uh, must be able to, to cope for themselves. So that's been a challenge. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine uh, how challenging that must have been. Um, regarding, let's go back to the, the vaccination. Uh, we understand that a Corona vaccination certificate or passport is being discussed. How, how will this work, uh, State Secretary? Well, um, we, have, we are uh, not finished yet in how we're going to, to do this. Um, we are considering what kind of role a Corona certificate can play in the reopening of the society and uh, of course uh, of the, our borders. 
So we have to uh, to look into what uh, the EU is been thinking and uh, the pre preparation for set of certificates uh, uh, must be aligned with with uh, the EU. We aim to finish the process in June. Uh, so uh, that is uh, about how to be able to cross the borders. And uh, we are also planning a, a kind of a simplified Corona certificate in, in May for our own uh, use uh, in Norway. So we can um, be used uh, to expand and speed up the reopening process. Uh, there has been uh, traveling restrictions inside Norway as well as across the borders. Right, right. Um, and with the vaccination rollout, when do you, where is Norway at now, percentage wise, wise with the population? And when do you expect reaching a level that would be considered herd immunity? Well, uh, we don't speak about uh, herd immunity, but we, we, we as uh, uh, I think Kroksus uh, uh, mentioned that he hoped to be able to vaccinate his, uh, his citizens uh, by the end of, uh, during September, uh, all the citizens uh, that is more than 18 years of, of age. And uh, we are now uh, have uh, 20, 3% of our uh, citizens have had the first dose, uh, and but then the numbers of vaccines are now increasing a lot. So we hope to speed up, and uh, we will hope to, to have reached our goals uh, this summer. Yeah, very good. So, um, can I hop in with a question? There? Yes. Um, are, are you expecting any uh, vaccine hesitancy? In Norway? There has been some uh, uh, and it's a very important uh, uh, subject. I think uh, Christian Kroxus can, can uh, tell something about this in, in, in practice because uh, uh, there's some groups of people that has been uh, hesitating to take vaccine but, but uh, for instance the, the older population uh, my my uh, experience is that everybody, almost everybody, want to have the vaccine. And, you know, they have lived as long as they, they know how important vaccines are. Uh, uh, younger people doesn't know that. Uh, it's very important for our infection control in, in many ways, uh, more than COVID-19. So I think uh, Krista may be able to, to fill me out. Yes, I, I may. Uh, I think uh, that some people are, are skeptic to, to vaccine uh, and I think that is quite natural. This is a new vaccine and it's also a new disease and it's quite healthy to have some sound skepticism. And my experience is that uh, almost all people who are skeptic to this vaccine they end up uh, taking the vaccine when they have their questions answered in uh, an okay manner. And I think the, the Norwegian anti-vax movement, if there exists anyone, uh, I would guess it is very, very small. It's only that people are uncertain because this is a new vaccine against a new disease. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what is your current recommendation for booking travel? Should families hold on, hold off on booking uh, travel for this summer? Or should they expect easing of restrictions and start planning for summer travel, summer fall travel? Um, I, I can try to answer that. Uh, we have recommended uh, the Norwegians to, be, to have their holidays in Norway this year. That is our recommendation. And um, that is uh, important be, until we have uh, more people with, with vaccine. Exactly. Which is expected. May, may I add something uh, to, I, I see that we are soon uh, covering, uh, uh, stopping this, uh, this uh, webinar. But um, I think um, when we started this, uh, when it came over us, 
we were very uh, aware of how is the hospitals going to manage this uh, this uh, pandemic. Um, that was important, but we didn't see the most important thing, the municipalities, because they have had the big work. They have been doing all the tests. They have been telling people to isolate them. They have been telling people to go in quarantine, and they have been working very hard to find out where have people been so that they can find uh, more uh, persons before they are uh, increasing the transmission. And um, in our elderly homes, they have been doing a fabulous job in a, that, that the elderly people could stay in the elderly homes instead of coming to the hospitals. And they have good, got good care and quality care in the, in the elderly homes. So uh, uh, I think our municipalities is what I'm most proud of. Very good. And uh, uh, Christian Kroek said, what, what are the, some of the lessons that you have learned from this pandemic? First, I'd like to say thank you very much for your very kind words from the Secretary of State. Thank you very much. Um, and we are very happy about this cooperation, both with the hospitals and with the, with the government, uh, the national government. Uh, but yes, uh, your, your question was about how could we handle things uh, differently if we knew more, was it? Yes, I mean, what have you learned? What are some of the lessons you have you have learned, and how? Yeah, and how? Yes, and also, I guess, also knowing what you know now, is there something you would have done differently? Yes, we have learned a lot about being prepared, and uh, we should have been investing time in realistic training for a pandemic before. Because when this pandemic hit us, uh, Moss municipality was uh, among the first uh, municipalities in Norway to be hit by the pandemic. We were uh, one of the first municipalities to have outbreaks in our nursing homes. And we didn't have a, so, anyone to, to learn from because it hit us so early. So we should have been investing time in realistic training and we should have been securing enough personal protective equipment. We should have had uh, a great storage of those uh, personal um, protective equipment so that we could handle this pandemic uh, in an even better way before we got the, the national supplies of this uh, equipment. Uh, and I think that is some of the things we have learned, but we also have learned some very positive things about the um, human adaptation to this uh, extreme situation when we have had nurses working uh, double shifts uh, and seven days a week because it was uh, uh, needed and that we had different uh, municipalities helping each other when it was needed. Uh, so the experience of working together uh, with a common goal and with a uh, common challenge, um, it has also been a very good lesson, I, I'd say. Very good. I have one last question that came in from the audience here. Following up on the travel question, as the director of Molecu Mo Molecular Laboratory focused on sequencing, what services can our community provide that would help you in your efforts? efforts. Would a post-vaccination, post-infection test monitoring memory T-cells to ensure continued immune response be part of, in, uh, we be of particular interest to the government as part of a vaccine, vaccine or immune passport? Um, I'm not ready to answer yes or no to that, but I think that was very interesting and, uh, and uh, I will I will bring it on because uh, I have to then that is how we have been working all the way. Uh, although I'm a nurse, uh, yeah. I'm not a very good one any longer. <laughs> but but uh, but I think this is uh, important for us to be prepared for for what is coming, because we know that uh, uh, doing the vaccine uh, vaccinations and and uh, getting the corona certificates. 
that's not enough because this is not over yet. Um, we are lucky. We are a small country with uh, uh, good resources in, in very many ways, but it is rather weird to be in our bubble in Norway, the Norwegian bubble, and knowing that everyone in the whole world is in the same bubble. So we have to use anything that can uh, help us to, to control this virus and this, uh, this pandemic uh, now and for the future pandemics that will come. We know that. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, great insights good and good uh, responses. Thank you, both of you. This, uh, we're at uh, the end of our time. Ivan, do you want to give some parting words? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you, State Secretary Alonson, uh, Dr. Krog, for your presentations and, and discussions. It was a great pleasure to have you both with us today. Um, I also want to thank everyone for tuning in and participating. And again, I encourage people to reach out to us if you're interested in renewing your Norwegian passport or need to turn in your paperwork to uh, for reinstatement of your Norwegian citizenship. Uh, our contact info should be found now in the chat function. So please check that out. And I certainly want to do a shout out to and a thank you to Max Stevenson and Norway House for all the behind the scenes technical assistance and, and support for today's webinar. And with that, I want to wish you all a wonderful afternoon. And of course, a great evening to our two guest presenters who are located in Norway. So again, thank you and hope to see you all very soon on our next uh, webinar. So thank you and have a great one. Bye-bye.